how you doing? You do catch what you do. Um, I know I'm really late on this, <laughs> but this is gonna be my Captain America review for the movie, uh, Captain America: The First Avenger movie. Uh, now I did go see this on opening night. Um, actually, the midnight showing on Thursday. So, uh, yes, this is late, and I did go see it again because it's about time a couple hours ago. Um, I don't come off right off that. I think, I don't know, I have to see Thor again, and I love the Iron Man's. It's probably my second favorite, uh, like, a movie built up to the Avengers, with Iron Man 1 being my favorite. Uh, I love this movie. This movie's awesome. If you haven't seen it yet, go see it. Go see it. Go do a matinee if you're broke. Just go see it. In 3D, the 3D actually works for this movie, so go see it that way. Cause I actually went, uh, went and saw it in 2D, uh, opening night, and then, and then I went and saw it 3D tonight. And the 3D actually was awesome. Which is Thor. I didn't see any of it in 3D. Uh, but in this one, you know, you got the shield coming out in and bullets, and it's it's quite awesome. Um, so this this is a. Uh, this review will be filled with spoilers, so if you don't, so if you, uh, if you don't like the spoilers, stop watching this right now. Captain America, the First Avenger. It opens with, um, in modern day, uh, in, like, Alaska, I think? And you see two guys in parkas start walking, they're talking about something they found. Somebody found something in the snow, in the ice. You zoom up on the two guys, some guy you've never seen before, and then the other guy is Agent Coulson from the Iron Man movies, and Thor. So, so you went, ooh, okay. And we all know, we all know they're going to find Captain America. So they find this giant ship in the ice, or this big thing that looks kind of like a ship, kind of. Like a plane or something. Cut a hole in it, drop down in there. Start looking around where they see Captain America's shield. Boom! Kick back to 1942. Uh, Steve Rogers, a little skinny, pissed head, sickly son of a bitch, trying to get into the army, trying to enroll in the army. Now, what they did with Christopher Evans is he, he, uh, he, everyone knows he worked out for this movie so he could look like the perfect physical specimen because that's Captain America. The super soldier serum, he's the perfect physical spe perfect physical soldier. Uh, almost, you know, he's a superhuman. So, so what they did in the computer is, instead of taking Chris on his head and pasting him on a skinny actor, which they've done before in other movies, in the Star Wars movies they do that a lot with pasting actors' heads on the swords feet when they're doing the lightsaber battles. That's why it looks like shit. In this movie, they just took Chris Evans and shrunk him down in the computer and painted out his muscles and... And dude, it is mint. Cause he, when he's skinny, stiff, when you know, Chris Evans, he's like six one, six two, and ripped and built. And you see that later on when he becomes uh, Captain America. But in starters, he is like like five seven and like skinny as a shithead. Awesome effects, great. So, anyways, he goes to sign up uh, for the army. Uh, they don't take him. He gets into a fight, he goes through right there, he gets into a fight with some kid, and you can tell this guy, this guy, this little skinny pisshead, he's got balls, and he's got heart. And you get that right away. The, the greatest thing about this movie is, if you saw the Captain America from the 70s, which is crap, and the Captain America from 1990, which is even worse, they really, you really get invested in Steve Rogers, and that's what, it, that, if that doesn't work, the movie wouldn't work. And Chris Evans is awesome. And, you know, everyone's, you know, you're used to seeing Chris Evans in these funny, haha -ha roles. Even in the Fantastic Four, he played Johnny Storm, who's a very wise-ass kind of character. This guy is a great actor. He, he, he is not that smart-assy character you've seen him in other movies. Uh, even if you went and saw like, something like Cellular, which he's, he's very serious in, too, you can tell he's a good actor. So anyways, he meets up with his buddy Bucky, uh, B Bucky Barnes, uh, who's already enlisted in the army, 
and you can and you can tell right off the bat these these two actors got chemistry and they you know these guys have been buddies for a really long time. So um, Steve Rogers goes to sign up again into the army. Now he's been signing up time after time after time, lying on his uh, on his. Uh, on his um, enrollment sheet, which is against the law back in 1942. So the doctor who's doing the super soldier uh, experiment, I forgot the doctor's name, but is played by um, uh, Stanley Tucci. Um, so he comes in, he says, I can give you a chance if you really want to be a soldier, join the army, fight for your country. So they bring him to the army base where it's a bunch of, you know, fit guys and then him. And of course, they're picking on him and the colonel, played by Tommy Lee Jones, again, great, you know, he totally fits the role, uh, is like, you scientist brought this skinny jerk onto my army base. What the heck, we got plenty of, plenty of young, fit guys right here. So anyways, they test him. He's obviously the right choice. He's the only guy that's got heart, and he, he cares about his country, and he cares about human life, and, and so he's perfect. And also, uh, enter Peggy Carter, played by, I forgot the actress's name, but it's Steve's love interest for this movie. She's kind of like, uh, a government agent. I'm guessing she's like the, one of the first S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. That's what my guess was. But, um, so he's gonna go do this, uh, experiment. They jack and pull, they jack and pull the steroids. Or the super soldier serum. Tony Stark's there, he's the one, he's like the scientist, like, Helping out with the serum. Bam! Turns into Captain America. And they put him in, he's all skinny, and then when when the, the door opens on the chamber he's in, that music this, this music hits it's like dun dun and I got a chill up my spine because you see him he looks, you know he's sweaty because you know he's in a lot of pain in the chamber and he's just ripped and whoa. It's just a, one of those moments. So then there's a Nazi, uh, he blows up the lab, kills the doctor, Stanley Tushi. Um, goes running. Captain America goes running after him. Uh, chasing, chasing to the city of New York, when the guy, he, you know, the Nazi, he's stealing cars and stuff. Captain America's just running. Running the whole time, catching up to cars. So they show off his powers right away. Uh, <laughs> funny one is, the guy, like, trying to get away, he grabs a kid with the gun, he's got the, and he throws the kid in the water, and Captain America goes to, like, dive into the water to save the kid, and the, go, the kid's like, I can swim, it's okay, go get him, <laughs> that was pretty cool, so anyways, guy, this guy, uh, this guy, uh, has, like, a submarine, like, a very high-tech submarine, something you wouldn't see back in 1942, gets in that, goes underwater, Steve Rogers dives in, punches through the windshield, pulls him out, throws him up on the deck, the guy kills himself, bites down on a uh, cyanide capsule. Now, intertwined with Steve Rogers' beginnings is the beginnings of uh, Yo Johann Schmidt, which is the Red Skull. So you see him, He's uh, he runs Hydra, which is like the uh, special science division of the Nazis. Um, but he has plans that he's, you know, he wants to destroy the world. And he's one of, the, he's one of those villains that he really doesn't have a, a reason for being a villain, he's just evil. Which, that's what the Red Skull's always been, so, uh, you know, people say that, you know, he didn't have an arc, and, but he's the Red Skull, he's just evil, he, that's all he is, so, and, and they did well not putting that over the top. This movie, for, this is a very silly comic book, and this movie does a very good job of not going over, going over the hill with all the silliness, they keep it very grounded, which is, but it's still what it is, so, uh, being a fan of the comic books, and the character in the cartoons as a kid, this awesome movie. Um, so anyway, Johann Schmidt, leader of Hydra, science division of the Nazis, he decides that he's gonna, you know, he, you know, F the Nazis, Hydra is what's now, Hydra is what's gonna take over the world, kills his Nazi, uh, superiors and whatnot, Hell Hydra! And the Hydra symbol is like two fists, kind of like the, the Hitler thing, I should probably shouldn't do it, but it's two fists, Hell Hydra! So Johann Schmidt, and he, he's not the Red Skull, he is, he is the Red Skull, but you see Hugo weaving, and you see this, he's got this line, and you can tell it's like a mask, so it's pretty cool. Um, okay, so cut to, um, Captain America again, um, 
they were supposed to have an army of super soldiers and they just got one. They don't want to put him on the front line. What if he dies? We're screwed. So they use him as like a proper propaganda tool for the for the military. You know, buy 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 war bonds and stuff like that. And it's like a U.S. OSHA. The dancer is like, ah, ah. and of course they throw him in the classic Captain America suit, which is a, is which is like the fans wanted to see this, and they make it silly, and it's just you know sock over his head and the eyes and the wings, and he's got not the round shield yet. He's got the shield shield. <clears throat> boots, the whole costume looks just like it's, just like it was drawn from the books. Hilarious. The only nitpick I have with this movie, the only nitpick, is during the USO show sequence, which lasts a good five minutes, they do not play the, when Captain America throws his mighty shield, they don't play that song. And I thought it would have been a perfect opportunity to have that song in the movie, but they don't do it. Maybe they, maybe they did and it's in test or something like that. Um, I hope, hopefully it'll be a delete scene on the full race. Um, so anyways, propaganda tool, of course he's, you know, he's just sitting there going like, you know, I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to help people, this isn't helping in the war or whatever. They get intel that Hydra has captured a bunch of soldiers, and, and, uh, the platoon number, it was Bucky's platoon. So, so Steve goes, so Steve, uh, Peggy Carter, dumb, and, uh, and, uh, Tony Stark, and Howard Stark, Tony Stark's dad, Drop him off in enemy territory to go save these soldiers. Uh, he busts out a bunch of soldiers, including Dum Dum Dugan, which is another character from the mo from the comics. Uh, if you don't know Dum Dum Dugan, uh, you've seen him in the Marvel. He was in Marvel Ultimate Alliance, the game, big mustache, bowler hat. Even later on, he has a bowler hat that's a helmet, like an army helmet shaped like a bowler hat. Whatever. It's funny though. That's that's just Dum Dum Dugan. Uh, played by I forgot something McDonald, the guy from the villain from Walking Tall with the Rock. He plays Dum Dum Dugan, which he does a good job too. So whatever. Um, and he finds Bucky. Uh, they break out. They meet up with Johann Schmidt. Uh, they fight. Uh, you and then like his mask gets torn, so you can see red under his eye. He yanks off the mask, and it's the Red Skull, and it's like the Red Skull from the books. He's drawn. Like, it's like they picked up the drawing and went, boom! And he looks amazing. I think it was all makeup. I don't think there was any CGI done on the Red Skull. I think it was all makeup. Phenomenal! Phenomenal makeup! It's awesome! So they break out. Uh, Johann Schmidt runs away because he's a little puss. Uh, I'll get you, Captain America! Hal Hydra! But, uh, yeah. So they get back. Uh, yay, he's a hero. He's Captain America. Uh, and then, cut to action montage, which he's in the suit you've seen in the trailers with the helmet, and the and he's got the round shield, and all that stuff. Uh, they actually do a sequence when they're going through shields and stuff, and Tony Stark and whatnot. But yeah, cut to action montage, he's got the shield, he's got a gun, they're fighting, bam, boom, boom, you see, Dum Dum Duke and Bucky, and Bucky's got like, he's kind of got his old Bucky outfit. But it's kind of a mix between the old Bucky outfit and the Winter Soldier outfit, which is awesome. And Winter Soldier, if you don't read the books and stuff, Winter Soldier, be Bucky becomes a bad guy in the books. He becomes a character called Winter Soldier, who basically he had a lot of, like, a, a, a bionic leg and arm and stuff like that. So, kind of goes nuts. So, yeah, his costume's kind of a mix between Bucky, the Bucky Barnes costume, the, like, from the 40s and the Winter Soldier costume, which he looks awesome. And the actor playing him, I forgot the actor playing him. He was the, uh, if you watched Hot Tub Time Machine, he was, like, the, the, the jerk in that, like, the ski instructor. I forgot the actor's name, but he's awesome as Bucky. He's really badass as Bucky, uh, which is cool. So, Dum Dum Duke and Bucky and the Howling Commandos, action montage. Uh, more action, 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 action. Uh... And this whole time, Johann Schmidt, you know, he's developing weapons to kill people and stuff. And even the scientist, the scientist working with Johann Schmidt, he realizes this guy's nuts. This guy's whack. So they capture the scientist. He tells them what his plan was. And, and then, you know, it's just, it's basically that, driving the story forward on what, what's the Red Skull doing and, and stuff like that. He basically wants to destroy the world, that's all. So the ending climax of the movie, uh, yeah. The ending climax is they break into his, his, oh, what they were doing in the whole action montage thing, what they were doing is, 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 uh, 
blowing up and, and you know, invading all of Hydra's bases. 